Hello, it's Alex Goodall here, and this is a video about how I personally use Evernote and how I organize my content within it. Now, I created this, or I was inspired to create this, after I had a conversation with a good friend of mine who also is a great Evernote fan and power user. And we were just comparing our ideas of, of how we use Evernote. And everyone has a different approach to using Evernote. That's the nice thing about it. There is no one way of using it. Everyone develops their own preferences. But I often find it instructive to see how other people use it and maybe pick up ideas from, from them. Particularly if you're new to using Evernote, you might want to at least start with a, a particular model of use and then evolve your own. Now, I don't intend this to be a primer or a tutorial on the facilities of Evernote, although inevitably I will be discussing some of the, uh, the facilities as we go through. So I'll assume you're familiar with the, the layout and the, and the general structure of, of Evernote. So here is the default layout, or I think it's the default layout. Anyway, it's, it's the default layout that comes up on my screen. And on here I've got the, call it control panel, I suppose. And at the moment it's all closed down. Normally it's opened up to how I've last used it, but I thought I'd start with it closed down. Uh, we've got work chat. I've not actually used this, but this is a way of having chats with people who you are sharing notebooks with. I will mention that in a minute. Shortcuts. I tend not to use shortcuts, although I probably should use them more. The normal concept of shortcuts. And what I would tend to do, you see I've, it's got the inbox and the archive as shortcuts. I, I'll talk about that in a minute, but that, that's very meaningless to me. The way I would use shortcuts is by putting particular tags in there, which uh, may be buried quite deep in my tag structure, which you'll see in a moment. So shortcuts I would use as a way of pulling up uh, a to, for easy access, deeply nested tags, which I tend to use often. If I used it properly, I'd probably have seven or eight tags under shortcuts, which I would access on a regular basis. I don't think I can remove that. Oh, I can. Okay, I can remove, you can I can remove the notebooks from shortcuts, which I, I'd want to do because I don't really care about notebooks. Which brings me to the next point. Notes displays all the notes, and what I would tend to do with notes again, you're probably familiar with this. If you're not, this is useful to know. Um, you can display it as a list, which then shows it like that, or a snippet, which is I tend to use, and you can order them by all sorts of characteristics. I tend to order it by updated and reverse sort order, which I think is the default, because that means the, the latest note that I edited is at the top of the list here, which in this case it is. And I nearly always just use notes rather than looking at any particular notebook. So here's, here's the first major point about how I use it, which differs, I know, from how a lot of other people use it. A lot of people use notebooks quite extensively. You'll see that I have very few notebooks. I have uh, half my notebooks in archive, another half in inbox, and actually that's about it. I've got a number of archive notebooks, which I, I don't access. I've got this one, which I created recently, which I'll talk about in a minute and uh, one that's appeared from IFTTT when I was doing some stuff with that and of course the trash book. Now the first point to note is for me whether a notebook is in inbox or archive makes no difference at all because the term inbox implies that something's coming into your inbox and you need to process it and then take it out of your inbox and then typically it would go to some other notebook or by default into the archive. That's the concept of, of inbox and that's why it's called that. But for me, I don't have the concept of processing a note. I would process a note if I was going to be using Evernote as a sort of task manager and I had a task which I wanted to do and that was represented as a note and when I'd done it, I'd put the note somewhere else because I'd processed that task. For me, that's not how I use Evernote. For me, Evernote is pretty much all an archive. It's, it's a repository of information, of content. And, I, and I, I don't use it at all for any form of task management. I think it's a mistake to try and use uh, a, a tool for too many functions. The, Evernote is designed exceptionally well for organizing, structuring content, for archive, for reference, for operations use, for content. It's not particularly well designed for task management, although there are things like reminders in there. But I separate those two functions out. 
Evernote I use for content and, and, and managing content, and for task management I use a completely different tool, which is GQs, which is you know, a, a, another conversation. Uh, GQs is, is exceptionally good at managing tasks, calendars, and reminders, and to-do lists, and so on, but not much good at organizing managing content. So I separate them out completely. <clears throat> so for me, archive, inbox, it's all the same. It doesn't really matter. In, in principle, everything should be an inbox. I think at one point I started putting everything into the archive, which is why some are in there and some aren't. The only reason, uh, other than odd, odd things like IFTTT, which is created outside my control, the only reason I would create a separate notebook is if I want to share it with someone. And that's what I've done with this notebook. So let me just say a little bit about that. I'm sharing this notebook with people who, depending on when you're watching this, either are, are going to buy or have bought a particular product, um, Dark Post Profits, through my affiliate link. So the, the bonus I'm giving is um, access to, basically access to this notebook. And what I've put in this notebook is all my personal notes about my learnings to do with Facebook and putting them all in there I can then share that notebook with individuals and they have access to everything that's in here I could make it available with edit access but in this case so if we were, if we were developing stuff collaboratively that's what I would do but this isn't this is me just sharing content which I don't want other people to to change so I'm making it available to the people with uh, just view access but people can then make copies of those notes, which they then have edit access to, and then they can add their own content to it. So that's the only reason I would have an extra notebook other than uh, archive and inbox. Uh, and in fact, I have done this before and, uh, with other notebooks, and they're in the archive notebook section here, which I don't use anymore. Now, the big difference between how people use Evernote tends to be the extent to which they use notebooks as opposed to tags and in fact I read recently that one person and a lot of people other people agreed with them that the way they use Evernote is to have a lot of notebooks and very few tags to me that's exactly the wrong way round I have few notebooks and many tags and the reason for that is that two reasons actually one is that as with File Explorer where you can only put a file into one folder you can only put a note into one notebook. You can't put it into multiple notebooks. That's the first reason. And the other reason is that notebooks can only be nested to one level, one extra level. So for example, these are archive notebooks. It's gone one level deep and I can't go any deeper than that. So I think any decent organizational structure needs to have multiple levels of nesting and hierarchy and the reason for that is because you you don't really want too many items at one level because it gets very difficult to search through it there are exceptions to that when you're organizing stuff alphabetically perhaps but other than that you you generally don't want too many things at one level which means if you've got a lot of items you need to have a reasonable depth of, of organization and you can't do that in notebooks but you can do it in tax so that's my argument and justification for using tags rather than notebooks. Now, I've spent quite a bit of time getting to that point of, of arguing that uh, to use tags instead of notebooks, and um, the video wouldn't be of that much use if that was the only point I made. So what I'm going to do now is just show you how I structure my tags, and I've evolved this a little bit over time. It's also based somewhat on my original IMI organizer product for organizing internet marketing downloads which some of you will be familiar with and also on the structure that I recommend for organizing your to-do list in GQs. So the overall way of organizing one's stuff, you know, the general structure, I think applies generically whether it's your to-do list or your downloads or your content within Evernote. There are slight differences, of course, but, but generically they're the same. So this is what I do. I have four main topics, business operations, business streams and topics, all my personal stuff, and reference, which is actually business reference. So 
from, from the business point of view, I just have those three main headings, business operations, business streams and topics, and reference. Again, if you're familiar with the IMA organizer, in particular the, the map and the pro editions, the one that use the mind map, you'll recognize that reference is the stuff that goes on the left of the map. So, uh, apologies for those of you that aren't familiar with that product. But if you are familiar with it, this might be useful though. The reference is the stuff that goes to the left of the map. Business operations and business streams and topics is the stuff that goes on the right. And the different projects are sort of the business streams and the business operations are the, the, the stuff that goes on within projects on the whole. So let's have a look at these. So let's see how, how I, what I've got under each of mine. So operations, oh, and by the way, these things are, are never static. That every so often you go in and, and reorganize stuff and change things around. Um, but these main headings pretty much stay the same. I, I haven't changed those for, well, pretty much since I, I set it up. And as I said, what I always try to do is not have too many items at any one level because it gets difficult to, to, to work through. So business operations is for things that I'm actually doing right now. It, it's, it's where the, my, my workbooks are, stuff that I'm doing. And so processes and records, so any processes and procedures I store under there. So, for example, if I get a support request for something that happens quite often, I'll have some canned text under a, a procedure in here. And that might be records here. So ma mainly procedure is the main one under processes and records. Um, and operations logs did something I started up relatively recently. So when I'm, when I'm working on something, so here, for example here, my, I'm working on a new funnel for the IMI organizer. And here I just keep a record of all the stuff that I've done by date. I do it fairly systematically. I, I, I don't put every single st thing down there. But uh, particularly if you're like me and you can't quite remember what you were doing or <laughs> uh, that recently, you just want to keep a record of stuff that you do to go back or you're doing, going through some complex testing and you want to re record all the different conditions of your testing. I just stick it into Evernote and I put it into an operations log. So some client work I'm doing here, I've got uh, a, a, quite a number of notes related to that but I have my main operations log there so here's an example where I tag things in multiple ways so this particular note is tagged as let me have let me just, just change the way I, I show this stuff so you can see more that you can see the tags better so here this is tagged by the client and it's also tagged by operations log so I will see this note under operations logs, I'll also see it under the business streams and topics. There it is. So it's a farm fresh tag and it's also an operations log. There's an example of, of where it's really useful to be able to tag things in multiple ways. So business operations, the, the key things there I would say the operations logs, processes and procedures, and infrastructure. The stuff I'm doing, you know, hosting and management, laptop, all the stuff I'm doing with uh, my, my business infrastructure the sort of things that go across multiple business streams you put under business operations then the next one is business streams and topics so all the all the different activities you, you do I have two if you like main ones is it my internet professionals where I have things to do with my uh, internetprofessionals.com and professionals blog uh, my IMI organizer how you how you organize things underneath the main business stream obviously will vary from stream to stream there isn't a, a fixed structure there but i have my list of offerings there um i my organizer is one ip manifesto mentoring and so on so business streams your digital allies is, is a different business it's related to digital marketing but it's not aimed so much at, at internet marketers and i have a whole selection of stuff uh i do there Business product ideas, that's a networking group, that's another networking group, which I have as a separate business stream, and various other stuff which is inactive. So operations are things that cross business streams, they've got stuff specific to business streams, and then finally there's reference, and reference actually ends up being the biggest section of all. And, and here I'm constantly struggling to, to keep the number of items at a particular level manageable. 
you can see how I've organised stuff, and it is it is a little bit related to how things are organised in the IMI organiser, but not quite. <laughs> I've got admin and organisation, things like outsourcing, contact integration. Now, don't forget, the, this is reference. This isn't stuff that I'm doing. If I'm doing stuff under any of these, it would go under business operations or business streams of topic, depending on what they are. So this is just reference information. So this is reportive it's uh, some tool that's linked to LinkedIn some outsourcing stuff quite sure what that is business models development tools funnels medium urbars niches testing and tracking traffic conversion the big two traffic conversion and the big one traffic generation lots of stuff goes on traffic generation and latterly as you've been on my mailing list, will know that I'm getting seriously into Facebook advertising. So here I've got, this is my structure for Facebook advertising. And in fact, by the way, anyone who's sharing this notebook, so if you, if you bought Dark Post Profits through my link and you're sharing this notebook with me, you will automatically have had created for you, that will automatically appear all these tags in your tag area. And what I recommend you do is you just stick them all under FB advertising. It won't, it won't recreate the structure for you. I think, I believe it would just put all the tags in your tag area. So put them all under FB advertising and then put FB advertising. Well, you need to have this whole structure, but put it somewhere under reference. And then as you evolve your structure, you can move it around. But basically put it all under FB advertising, maybe all under Facebook as well, I guess. So that's how that works. And you can see why it's important, I think, to have multiple levels of nesting rather than just the single level of nesting that you get with notebooks. And of course, inevitably, under WordPress, there's an awful lot of stuff there. I keep record of different plugins, themes, although mostly plugins. And a lot of these, actually, uh, I use the screen capture facility of, of Evernote if I see uh, an interesting site, an interesting plugin. I will do a, a screen capture and I get the whole screen captured and organized. And I will likely create, uh, even join the screen capture, I can actually cre um, create a tag when the the note gets stored in, in Evernote, the, the tag is already there. Now it won't automatically appear in my, in the right place, it will just appear as a new tag alphabetically, alphabetically in this list. So whenever I do that, I have to go and manually move it into the right section. But that's not a major, that's not a major headache. That only happens when I create a new tag, obviously. So I think that's all that is worth saying at this point on how I use Evernote. The two key points are few, note, few notebooks. Only create an extra additional notebook if you wanted to share the notes with people. Because the only thing you can share is a notebook. So you have to put the notes in there. And lots of tags and the three main headings, business operations, business streams and topics, and reference. How you organize stuff under there is, is up to you, but if you want to copy the sort of things I do, that's how I do it there. Oh, by the way, under funnels, I do things like email marketing and list building. I would probably rationalize this, it's getting too big, but at the moment that, that's what it's like. So that's all I really want to say about how I organize the content. If you're familiar with Evernote, you may wonder why I've not said anything about search, because one of the really strong points about Evernote is how good its search facilities are. Uh, but I haven't spoken about that because, well, uh, it doesn't really matter how you do the organization for the search to work. So there's not a lot of controversy or different ways of approaching search. You just tend to use it. The only thing you might want to do to improve the search is in the way you name your notes. Um, so, for example, in this particular case, all the notes that I've put into the shared folder I've given this particular structure to, which means I could search on AG Notes and I get all my notes, and I haven't got a particular tag called AG Notes, and I could have AG Notes for a different topic, and I'd get them all back. So, if you think a little bit carefully about how you do the naming of your of the note, then you can make better use of search. That's the only element of search that, that's probably worth mentioning. Otherwise, just use the search a lot because it's a really good way of finding content. Okay, I hope you found that useful. If you like it and you're watching this on YouTube, please add a comment. If you're watching it on my blog, tell me what you think about it. If you're just watching it on Facebook, basically wherever you're watching it, uh, I'd love to get some, some feedback on how, what you think about it. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.